Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. This week we are going to carry on looking at our Islamic art and how we can use that in dance. I found some more beautiful pictures today and some designs and patterns um, and one thing, one object in particular we're going to be looking at and creating a dance around. So I'm really excited about it because it's very, very beautiful. Um, so first of all we're going to warm up because we need to do that at the beginning of every dance lesson. We warm up our brains and we're going to warm up our bodies. So the best way to do that is with good old musical statues. So I want you to move in any way you like. You can jump around the space, you can turn, just be careful if your space isn't very big. We don't want to knock over things and break things, okay? And then when I, when I uh, pause the music, you've got to freeze absolutely still as you can in any shape you like, okay? Here we go, let's get moving. <laughs> Well done. Pause. Freeze. Any position you like. Good. Hold that. Hold that. And go. Hold. Good. Maybe something different this time. So you could try a different level. Okay. Breeze. Well done, still as you can, still as you can. Breeze. Good. Move something completely different on the floor with your arms up. Good. Well done. Very last one. a good warm up isn't it? Get nice and warm. Now, we've played this a while ago, but this is such a brilliant game. We're going to play the honey pot game, where you pick up your honey pot and we are going to dip our feet in first of all to make them really, really sticky. So can you dip in your feet? Ooh, lovely and sticky. Good, put the pot down. Okay, can you stick your feet to Something in your room made of wood. So have a look around, it can be anything. It can be very, very small. It can be something big. I've got my table stand here. So I'm gonna stick my feet to something made of wood. What have you got? Have a think. Okay, good. Something made of wood. If you haven't, don't worry. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is stick your feet to your own feet. There we go. So stick the soles of your feet together. Okay, honey squishing together. If you're with someone else, that would be lovely. You can stick your feet to their feet as well. That's really nice. But if you're on your own like me, you can stick your feet together. Good. Okay, and finally, can you stick your feet to something soft? Now, what's soft and... I know what's soft. My tracksuit bottoms are quite soft here, so I'm going to stick my feet or my foot to my own tracksuit bottoms, but also my carpet, which I'm dancing on, is quite soft. So I've actually got two things. So I've got my foot on my leg, my soft tracksuit bottoms, and my carpet. So what have you got? It could be a cushion, it could be anything you like, something soft. Well done. Right, go and pick up your honey pot again. Whoa, okay. This time we're gonna stick our elbows in. Ready? Ooh, lovely. Stick your elbows in nice and sticky. Put your pot down, don't smash it. We'll need that later. Sticky elbows. Can you stick your elbows to something made of metal? Okay, be careful not to knock your elbow too hard because metal's hard. But what have we got that's metal? I've actually got my, um, what's it called? Plug sockets down here. That's actually made of metal. If I'm very careful, I can put my elbow onto my plug sockets. What have you got? 
in your room that's made of metal. Have a look around. Good. The next one is your wall. Hopefully you've got some walls in your wherever you are. So stick your elbow to a wall. You can stick both elbows if you like. Okay. <laughs> Good. And finally, can you stick your elbows together? Can you stick your elbows together like that? And if you're with someone else, you might want to stick your elbows to their elbows. That's nice as well. So you can give a good old stretch, stick elbow to elbow, or you can just stick them to each other. Great. Well done. Unstick. Ugh. Ugh. Very good. Give your arms a shake. Well done. Give your legs a shake. And I'm going to call out some shapes now. And I'd like you to show me those shapes. Because in our ceramics we were looking at last week, in Islamic art there's lots of geometrical shapes and that's all pieced together, that's what makes up these beautiful, beautiful pieces of art that we've been looking at. So let's try a few out. So we're going to start with a star. Now we've been looking at before, you can use any levels, so you could have a star on the sort of middle level here, you could have a star on a high level, or you could have a star on a very low level, which is nice and spread out, isn't it? So imagine, stretch right out five points of a star. Get any level you like. Okay, the next one is a triangle. Can you make me a triangle? Hmm, that's quite hard, isn't it? Well, that's quite a simple one. Can you see I've got my arms? You can imagine one, two, three, there, like that. How else could you do that with your legs? That's a triangle, isn't it? Up, down, one, two, three. Three lines of a triangle. It even works for a turn sideways. One, two, three. What else could you do? That's a kind of triangle, isn't it? Like that, there. So see what you can do with your bodies to make a big triangle. Good. The next one is, hmm, a square. How are you gonna make a square? Now, you're really good at this, I've seen you guys do this so what could we do it's easier with someone else isn't it because you've got four sides then but actually if you put your feet together and make each side equal we have got a square in our legs there but see if you can come up with another way what else could we do we could do our hands hold on one two three four that's a triangle sort of square like that if i there we go oh there we go <laughs> So I've got my legs and my fingers. So it doesn't have to be a big square at all. This is quite a big square with my legs, but you could have a small square. Good. And the last one, I want you to draw a curve or like a half moon. Okay, so I thought a really nice one would be just stretching your arm over, over to the side. Can you see that nice curved moon shape? And that's a good stretch as well, actually, isn't it, down the side? Can you reach up? Up, 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 over, and stretch to the other side, showing that lovely curve whoosh, all the way down the side there. Good. And look, you can make another curve with your arm there. So you've got two curves. You've got a small one here and a big one here. So that's some lovely shapes, isn't it, with our bodies? Good. Come back up. Standing, standing. I want to show you a few pictures. Here we go. Now, this is what we looked at last week. And I'll quickly whiz through these again. And this was Islamic art. This was some examples of the beautiful art that we were looking at. So do you remember these patterns that we looked at? There were lots and lots of different shapes within other shapes. And that's what was so sort of complicated and detailed about it. And you can see the different colors that we looked at last week as well. And one of the main things that was really apparent and really interesting and appeared a lot in, a, in most of these patterns, were they repeating patterns. So they, they were repeating over and over and over again. So Islamic potters worked as early as the 19th century in Arabia, developing their techniques and designs. And at the center of all their work um, and their art is their god Allah. And there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that says Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. They wanted to make their objects beautiful to remind them of him. So everything they do, they want to make as beautiful as possible to remind them of their God. 
And this is one we looked at last week called an arabesque. And this is very, this is a bit like, can you see the curve shape we just made with our body like that? Almost like half moon and the intricate circles and the never ending patterns. Um, so here we can look at these ones as well. They used it on ceramics and that was a prayer rug we looked at as well. So very, so objects that were very special to people. That was very important. Um, so the complex, if we go back to these ones, the complex geometric designs create the impression of unending repetition. And this also helps a person get an idea of the infinite nature of Allah. So something that goes on forever and ever. Here we go. We are going to focus on this particular jug or vase or ewer. It's kind of like, can you see, it's very thin at the top and it's got a big bulging sort of bit at the bottom and that's used to hold water or other things. They used to hold ointment and when, when they were first designed they were much smaller and then they developed into bigger more elaborate designs. So this one was made in about the 15th century in Turkey so that was about 500 years ago and there's lots of repeating patterns which are used on tiles and buildings and also it's used here on this ewer. Can you see? So what can you see in this picture? What colours can you see? What patterns? What designs? Now the, one of the first things I can see are these sort of petal shapes here. These blue petal shapes and they're very beautiful. And they're here, <clears throat> so we've got three here and then we've got more around the side here as well. And if we turned it round it would probably be on the other side as well. So that's very beautiful, these sort of petal shapes here. And inside there's a little red sort of flowery pattern as well, or maybe just a pattern. Um, the other thing I've noticed is, can you see these really small lines on the handles here? And it's a lovely curved shape, so that would be really nice to hold, wouldn't it? So you're not just going to, if you pick that up and poured it, it would actually feel really nice to hold that one. And can you see these little lines, again, repeating all the way up the handle there? The other thing I noticed was this sort of ribbon along the bottom. So again, it's something that was going on forever. There's no beginning and there's no end. So it's going round and round and round and round and round and round, all the way round the bottom. So it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And last week in our dances, we looked at repeating patterns, didn't we? And something, a dance being danced over and over and over and over again. And one of the most interesting things that's caught my eye about this is this sort of green pattern here that covers most of it and I don't know what you think but I think it looks a little bit like sort of fish scales and I think that's really interesting it's this gorgeous green color but it sort of fades in and out so there's lots of different types of green but it's almost like a, a fish or almost like a mermaid or something like that isn't it it isn't but it looks like that I think and can you see the scales overlapping each other here the whole time so they're overlapping each other and um, again it's like that sense of things going on and on and on forever and ever and what colors can you see in this what can you see greens red sort of orangey red isn't it blues whites and the inside looks like it's white as well so lots and lots of things to look at so I was looking at this vase and I thought oh this is really really good we can definitely make up some dances about this so that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing I thought we'd look at is the shape of the ewer or the jug vase. Okay, so we're gonna stand in the middle of our space and our hands are gonna be up and we're gonna draw the shape of it with our hands. So you can really imagine it in front of you. Okay, so, but we're gonna go down to the floor. So we're gonna draw the neck and we're gonna draw the big bulge and we're gonna go down to the floor. Next, we're gonna draw those lovely sort of petal shapes which come round, so we're gonna bring one arm round nice and softly, then we're gonna bring the other arm round nice and softly to the front here. Good, and I thought we're gonna hold that shape, that nice pointy shape, and we're gonna bring our head down as well. Okay, so we're growing, so you can bring your arm a bit like a ribbon, I imagine it's sort of blowing in the wind, and hold. Bring the other arm around and hold and then bring your head down to hold that pattern. Good. From here I really like the idea of those scales being on top of each other all the time, sort of building up a layer. 
So I thought we could do that on the floor really easily. So we could put our hand down on the floor and our other hand's gonna go on top. So we're gonna put our hand down and then our other hand on top. Hand down, hand on top. Hand down. So we're making this covering of those scales on top of each other. So you see? So you can imagine in front of you, you've got a sheet of these lovely scales. Good. Okay, we're then gonna bring the hands um, out to the side and we're gonna turn and stand at the same time. So you can bring your foot up, you're gonna turn, stand, whoops, find your center, and we're gonna start again. We keep repeating it like the repeating patterns. So we start with the neck of the vase, hand down. So here, bring the arm around, arm around, okay, and head down. And make the scales, hands down. Let's see, hands down, hands down, hands down. So you're covering your hands all the time. You can put them on your legs if you like as well. That's quite nice too. Wherever you like, you can go right out in front of you. And hit really close, just to cover that big space. Good, we're gonna bring our arms out, we're gonna bring our foot up, turn and stand. Good. So if you want to, you can wind that back and have a little practice. And if you want to, you can try it with music with me. Okay, so let's have a go. doing that it's so relaxing I love that music good so what I want you to do now is can you grab a piece of paper and a pen or pencil it doesn't have to be fancy at all and I will wait or you can just pause me okay until you come back all we need is a pen and pencil and a piece of paper that's all we need okay okay have you got that great so, very quickly, let me show you our vase shape again. Okay, just to remind you, so this is what we've done. We've got our covering scales, our petals, our ribbons, our turning, and we've made the shape. So with that in mind, with your pen and paper, we are going to draw some very simple shapes that remind you of that jug. So I think we're not drawing the jug, it's just the very, very sort of basic shape of it. So I think I would draw, this is what we drew with our hands, didn't we? Very, do you remember at the beginning, we drew that with our hands, and next we brought our arms round, and we drew, we did two of those, didn't we? We brought one arm round, and we brought the other arm round, and then we put our head down into the middle, didn't we? We then did our hand coverings, okay, and for that, I think it's something, that kind of thing. I imagine one hand, can you see, covering the other. Now you can draw whatever you like. Okay. And then we did a big turn to stand up. And when I think of a big turn, I almost think of that to stand up. And then what did we do? We repeated the whole thing again. So we went down, we brought our arms around, we did our hand coverings, we turned and stood up. So this is almost like a little bit of notation. This is what we call when we write out dances. But I looked at the picture and I looked at the shapes of these and I thought, oh, this could actually be really, really nice. And sometimes it's a really good reminder when we're doing dances. You can often look at patterns and it reminds you of what we're doing. So if you've managed to 
you can jot down something like that or what you can do is pause it go back to the picture that I showed you and then you draw whatever you think reminds you of the movement that we've done in your own picture so you should end up with some very basic sort of patterns and shapes so what you can do is put that on the floor in front of you okay we're going to try that again with the music and you can look at that picture and then see if you are drawing that with your body if you're expressing that and if you're representing that with your body okay so it's like a constant reminder that we're not just dancing and moving around in the space the movement has come from somewhere and it's come from that beautiful turkish ewer that vase that we were looking at we've turned it into a very very simplistic drawing and now we're making it into movement okay so i'm going to put the music on okay let's have a look at our drawing and move at the same time okay and see if it helps us remember the movement and where it's come from okay let's go let's do it twice Well done. So how did you find that? Was it easier looking at the picture that we drew? So looking at this, some people find that easier because they look at it and it reminds them of what movement's coming. Some people find it easier just to do the dance and not think and not look at the shapes that we've just drawn. But it's up to you because everyone dances in very different ways. But this is what we'll be looking at over the next few weeks is sort of dance techniques and then we can take this into making our own choreography as well. So we'll be looking at that. But let's do a little cool down. Okay, and what we're going to do is look at the shapes we looked at at the beginning, but I want to look at the idea of speeds again. I'm going to be going in slow motion. So I'm going to call out the shapes, but we're going to make that shape in a very slow, controlled way. Because it's very easy in dance to be moving very fast, la 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 la. And actually, to have control of our body and move very slowly is quite hard. Plus, this is a cool down, so we can get our breathing back and get back to where we were at the beginning. So I'll put on some music and we can try these shapes. So let's try our star. So we start very small.
thank you very much for dancing with me today. I wish I'd seen your dancers, I bet they look lovely, but we're going to carry on with this next week and I will see you then. Thank you.